Hello, welcome to He's a Phantom Podcast. I'm your host, Mike, and along with me is Wade, Devin, and Zane. Hey. Salutations. <laughs> Zane. Zane. Z? <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, um, doing my Walter White imitate. I, I'm going to do that. It's been a while since we I did a podcast. It's been like at least three weeks now, which is okay. Um, so we, today we're actually going to talk about episode four. Finally, God, the first three were a mess to go through because uh-huh. they were so out of order in airing. So, so out of order. So now we're back on track, and we're on episode four now. Attack of the Killer Garage, though, which I love the title. It reminds me of like a '50s B movie. Exactly, exactly, and um, and. I just realized this, but yeah, that's a very common title. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, Attack of the Clones, Attack oh. of the Flying. I can find something. <laughs> yeah, it's a very. There's a common... lot of titles with the word "attack" in there. Yeah, especially, and like you said, especially during the '50s. Yeah, it's a lot of attack of attack of, of the creatures. Yeah. I was going to say, who doesn't want to see Attack of the Killer somethings? Because technically we are all strange, twisted people that want to see Attack of something. Exactly. Especially in the 50s. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, Creature fa- features. <laughs> Creature features, my favorite. Oh, yes. <laughs> so basically the episode... Let me uh, read the synopsis off Wikipedia here. The episode is about Danny has to find some... <clears throat> Sorry. Danny has found himself finally part of the in crowd at Casper High. Unfortunately, the lab and household junk that he sold to pay for the new outfit has been infused with a sp- special influence. Antagonist, master of all things electronic and beeping, is on the loose. It's up to Danny to save the city, make it to the party, and reconcile with Sam and Tucker. Okay. That's Wikipedia saw- synopsis. Wikipedia is just one of the weirdest places to find a synopsis on an episode. It's like, oh, yeah, what? <laughs> and the thing is, anybody can go in and change it if they want to. Exactly. Yeah, you can write about how there's um, underwear involved. In an... <laughs> Wait. That's Wikipedia. That's why they always say if you want to do research, don't go to Wikipedia, because it's not always 100% accurate on there. So that's going to be the amusing part. Let's just pr- call this amusing Wikipedia of Subnaus. <laughs> well, hey, well, this episode, part of this episode is about technology, and well, there you go. You. There you go, full circle. So, uh, um, is it okay if we can all give our views on the episode one at a time? Thoughts. First impressions. Let's go just on. do that. First go ahead. Impressions. Cool. Okay. Go on, Zane. You're first. <laughs> okay. Well, I I I just watched it today. Mhm. Okay. S- sorry guys, sorry. Do you want someone to go first and we'll come back to you? Yeah, sure. No problem. I'll, I'll go first then cuz I've seen this episode multiple times and I like this one, actually. I mean, it's not my favorite. It's not, like, my personal favorite season one, but I do like this episode for one reason, one reason only. Technus. <laughs> I think exactly. He's one, he's I knew awesome. you were going to say that. Technus is an awesome villain in this. And it's just so funny how Technus is just like, Oh, you have Technus, master of electronics and beeping and he and just shouts his motive and it's just hysterical to watch <laughs> exactly and it's an excellent parody of traditional villains and how they keep shouting their motive and the thing about tetanus is he he has a trademark to let you know that he's coming the laugh the cackle very yes. true like and you also- don't even need to see him and you know that he's about to come when you hear that <laughs> you know very true. Also, the other sign you can tell he's coming is the technology that's going towards him. Yep. And, and that he's a trickster, also. 
Yeah, that's true. He'll he mess to play them. jokes. The best characters are tricksters. And trickster characters are as old as um, humanity. Humanity. And um, it, it, it goes way far back. To ancient Greece, probably. The, the comic, yeah. the comedic fool. Yes. Yeah, that's um, true. That's common. Yes, and um, and there's just a wide variety of tricksters. Um, Technus is kind of like a troll. Well, he oh. basically preys upon technology, so yeah, he's a troll. <laughs> uh, uh, um, if, if Technus existed, he would be like Dushy Nick 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 Pick. I know exactly yeah, who you're talking about. But... Mm -hmm. That's not how, I, how it was. <gasps> oh man, that would be a In fact, that's what he sounds like. like. Well, that's that basically a... what he is. It's funny, now I could see it now. It's like, Technus, what have you done since 2007? I went to become Douchey McNickpick. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, I think that Douchey McNickpick... <laughs> Let's just say Douchey. I, I, sorry. Um, he became Tactness, I, I guess. Um, well, no, because technically Douchey came later because Doug didn't start the show till later. It was around the right. same time. I, I'm sorry. I, Just my doing chronological here. <laughs> That's okay. my, my inner conspiracy theorist. <laughs> okay. Can, can I do inner conspiracy theories? That'd be fun. Maybe Technus was the ghost of some really psychotic whack job nerd in the 80s who wanted to really get into the whole, um, uh, techno- the whole, uh, what do you call it? It was during the time when they were really experimenting with, like, Microsoft and that kind of stuff and early Apple computers. This was the time, too, where there was no internet and the only thing that computers were used for was pretty much just, it was almost like a digital typewriter. That's probably, that's what Tetanus reminds me of. Somebody who was like one of those Stuck early... Stuck in the 80s. Some, like he was an early uh, yeah. computer, like somebody who might have worked for Apple back then or Microsoft. Yeah, and he is just, and sure. he is just way stuck back in time. Yeah, and he, he is. And he yeah. always works with electricity and technology, so my theory, I'm yeah. guessing, is he probably was in one of his real spastic modes. Yeah. He did something yeah. really stupid, and he ended up barbecuing this himself. This is a great yeah. idea for... Sorry to interrupt, Wade. That's okay. Go but, ahead. Aha! I, I just had a, an insight. Um, maybe Technus represents how how be um some people who are way behind and stuck in the past yes oh yeah you know that's a good point like he, somebody who has really... his foot one step too far into the past and one step too far into the future basically yeah he's, he's been exactly like he's been known to say uh outdated slang such as hip and far out so you can tell by that yeah uh, that's true and I who's your daddy like... mm. <laughs> oh my god who's your daddy? I... Who's your daddy, and what does he do? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Who's is your daddy, um, and what does he do? My dad fights ghosts. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> is Technus in, an, in any other episodes? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, he will be. Later on, yes. He will return. He will return. And not to give away any spoilers, <laughs> but his appearance actually does change over time. Yes, he does. Yeah, you'll see. I... Uh, those later episodes, I like him more, but this, so far for this one, it is pretty good to see Technus as the new villain. He's pretty awesome. I like. I would later. say out of all the of, out of all the villains from Danny Phantom, he's probably one of the funniest. Yeah, yeah. and um, he's definitely a comedic villain. And um, as as I said before, guys, I am obsessed with villains, and sometimes I've always imagined what kind of villain would I be. I would be that combination of comedic villain and psycho and com and and crazy and, and totally mad. Like um I, I I would I would kind of be like that anarch um that that absolute lunatic. But also but I won't be stupid. I would be like a diabolical plotter also. An evil genius basically. Yeah, like a mad a mad genius. Is, well, but but with but with um, but there are plenty of evil genius villains. 
Um, right. And you got to make a good villain. Here's what I've noticed. Some of the best villains are very subtle and understated. And yes, if you watch Breaking Bad, that's what makes the villains on that show so great. How chill and cool and laid back they appear. And how... I mean, and they can be very, very subtle. And you, you kind of have to guess. You kind of have to think like a detective their true motives. Well, and that's with everything, too. Like I said, I said before, subtlety in the whole less is more aspect is... I'm a huge advocate. I've always been a huge advocate of subtlety and less is more. Oh, me too. Mm-hmm. Me I, too. I think a lot. There's a lot of, of of writers out there that unfortunately don't get that. Exactly, and especially nowadays. And um, but goofy villains and great um, a, a good villain is a great balance of funny and terrifying. Right. I mean, you don't know whether yeah. to be the a Joker or just to laugh. At. Yeah, I think the Joker's a perfect example of both comedic and psychotic at the same time. Yeah. Right. He, he's right. basically, and Tetanus in a way is sort of like the Joker. Maybe not quite on the same right. psychotic level as right. the Joker. No, but... not even a little. He's no. less psychotic. He's more yeah. the. He's definitely funnier a than the box goes, but. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, you can, he, at least you could take Tetanus seriously. Right. <laughs> That, so, even though even the old technist loves to play jokes every now and then. Right. Yes. So yeah, what it, what what does technist sound like? Who who do you think voices technist? I oh. actually um, looked it up, and as dumbfounded as I was about this, it's not Gilbert Godfrey. It's, it's actually the same person who voices. Jack Benton. Rob what? Paulson. Rob Paulson. Rob Paulson. Paulson. Rob Paulson is awesome. I love Rob Paulson. He is freaking... I, I swear. He's basically like... The, From Animaniacs. Um, mm-hmm. What I was going to say, oh, say was he's basically almost reminds you of an old disc jockey. Of an, he's like the old disc jockey Absolutely. of animation, the way he talks. Yes. He's a lot of speed in his voice, like, Hey, he's Danny, very you want to see what I created? Oh, isn't this amazing? I love Rob Paulson. It, it's so amazing that um, in this episode, he's voicing two different characters. He's mm-hmm. playing both Jack Fenton and Technus in the same episode. Yep. So and he has to I change can... voice as well for both of those characters. Right. Yes, and it's um, amazing how well he pulls is. that off. Yeah, because... In a lot of in a lot of modern day cartoons, that's that's very common for a single voice actor to voice multiple characters. Yes. And... Yeah, that is true. And I honestly find that quite impressive, honestly. It and is. It's, you got to have a lot of talent to do it. Yep. A- absolutely. Yeah, you have a lot of it's just amazing how a voice actor can do radically different voices for characters. Yes, especially when you think about it. Yeah, Jack's like Jack's is kind of a normal voice when you think about it. But then Technus it sounds almost like freaking Gilbert Gottfried. I know. And, and like which I is said, and I thought I, all these years I thought it was him. I yeah. never made that connection honestly. Maybe I don't know why that's I just the it. influence of the character. Like this, say, hey Rob, you have to sound like Gilbert Gottfried because that's what that's I want. That's probably to what happened. That's I probably what happened. it is because it's just ironic how it sounds just like him. I never made that connection as a kid honestly. It's amazing considering how much I love Aladdin, yet I never made that connection at all. <laughs> but um. I, I think it's awesome. Yeah, now that I look back, yeah, he does sound like Gilbert Gottfried. It's very impressive. I knew who Gilbert the original Gottfried was. actually has voiced a lot of different uh, cartoon characters as well on different TV shows. But like you've said, he, uh, when it comes to voice acting, he's probably best known for both Iago and the Aflac Duck. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. When you think about it, yeah, I think um, just depends on who, like for at least with Rob Paulson, you're able to tell with the, at least with him in this episode how much his range is and he's able to do both and that's oh, yeah. exactly interesting to see that like just from a voice acting perspective imagine having to record for two completely different characters who have completely different personalities i know it's... absolutely it would be it's insane and um it, it would be very difficult and um 
because you kind of have to jump from one character to another and I think that as a voice actor you must be good with improv mm. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's true. and I'm sure you can get mixed up at times it's like he's pro- it, it'd be almost like he's the script's given to him and he has to read one of Jack's lines and it comes out as tetanus and then he's like <laughs> Like the producer or who's ever uh, in in charge of the recording or whatever, you know, tells him you got to do. You know, I'm sure that there was obviously more than just one take. Oh yeah. Yeah, that, yeah there's no way you can pull off a good. For, there's rare times where a voice actor actually can pull off a really good take of a line just on the first try. Right. It's it's very hard to do that. I'm and sure. I, I'm sure they take a lot of time to record these episodes, and I do get that. So I think that's impressive alone. Just on that alone for me. That sold me. Major props to the voice actors out there who do this for a living. Yes, major props to all the voice actors that do so much hard work for these shows. Rob Paulson, this is kind of your episode. Good job. Rob Paulson, Maurice, Lamar- Maurice Lombarch. I, I just have Dan Castellaneta, I I just find voice actors. Oh, Jim Cummings. Uh huh. Jim Freaking Cummings. Awesome. He's awesome. Able to flawlessly redub Jeremy Irons and Christopher Lloyd. Sounding. Mm hmm. That, that I is... find impressive. Yeah. That is just amazing to me. The kind in. Well, well, I do want to say this about Jim Cummings. I do love how he's able to pull that off. How he's able to just take over another character when the uh, voice actor is absent, like Christopher Lloyd or um, Jeremy Irons, for example, when their voices weren't working anymore for yeah. some unknown reason. But it's just that's amazing how he's able to also pull off Winnie the Pooh. Think about it. Like I, I remember yeah. Yeah. To Winnie the Pooh. Both the original voice actor Sterling Holloway and I was just gonna say, and you're like, wait a minute, are you sure? (laughs) Like I was so confused at first. I was like, what? And um, and one amazing skill of voice actors I realize is, let's look at a lot of old cartoons that are constantly being revived. There are plenty. There are voice actors who are able to flawlessly recreate. Mel Blanc's voices. Right. Mm-hmm. It's easy to impersonate the characters. Their impressions yeah. of the original car- uh, characters. Even, like, I mean, imp- it kind of improves on the characters, too, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, like, brings I mean, them to a new level, basically. Um, if you look at a movie like Space Jam, for instance, and whether you love or hate that movie, um, I'm, more in the, I'm more neutral about it. I mm-hmm. actually haven't seen that movie in a long time. Long t- I have seen the movie, but I haven't really in a long time. So I yeah. remember liking uh, it pretty, pretty much. Yeah, but it is just a bizarre movie. But mm-hmm. one of the great elements. The in idea. It, it has a few. The soundtrack, and um, the soundtrack is amazing, and also the animation and the voice. They sound exactly like. The Looney Tunes. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yes. And they do, I, actually. It's I amazing to me. I'm it, sure it's the easiest movie to make, either, from a technical standpoint. At it, like, putting actors in there and, like, having scenes like when um, the one guy based, it almost looks like he just got run over by a, by a, um, by a steamroller and then they have to, like, uh, put helium into that. him and stuff and it's like how did they do that yeah from a technological standpoint a lot of how movie magic who sh- framed roger rabbit is a perfect example i was of... just gonna say and that absolutely. movie i'm sure uh, absolutely difficult on on a technical stamp uh, from a technical standpoint as well to make, make like roger rabbit like for, like the scene where he's uh, at the bar and he's basically uh, performing on the bar and he's breaking the dishes over their head. His head. They actually had to build uh, like some kind of mechanical animatronic. Yeah, oh, and yeah, then they just I put Roger that. Rabbit in the place of that. The animate. And Roger mm-hmm. Rabbit is like, I've always been obsessed with that film because it's just it's 
technological marvel, really, and it oh, is. is. Th there's a lot of argument. Which film... How did the dis the, renas the animation renaissance begin? Some oh, argue, yes. I knew about Mermaid. this argument. Everyone Some argue argue Roger, Little Mermaid. Well, uh, I would say that um, Mermaid kicked off the Disney renaissance. Because Disney, as you probably know, was going through a year like a decade long slump mm -hmm. kind of like how um and i would love to see doug walk and it editorial. sort of went, started maybe maybe slowly i would say after he after his death absolutely yeah and well because very few good films but at, at best the films were mediocre and a lot of them became cult classics absolutely absolutely not that they were bad films, they they are or that the that the majority of people um, because you know everybody has different opinions on movies. It wasn't that right. a lot of people thought like let's just say uh, let's just say the Aristocats to like Oliver Oliver and Company that timeline. Yeah, I'm sure there's people out there, there's a lot of people out there who who um, who either like those movies or don't. You know whatever your opinion is, but they yes. they were they were films that. They 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 weren't like how should I put this ones that ev everybody remembered all the details to very well. Absolutely, they're not the fun. It's not so much it. on whether you like something or you don't like something. It's what what you know what's memorable. Because hey, whether whether you like a movie or dislike a movie, you know, there's it's it's always about hey, there's there's movies that I love. And movies yeah. that I don't like, but that I still remember. Like, do you remember why you love them, or you remember why you don't like? Them? Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's and, um, about animation history today, I think we are in a time here. We are in a new Renaissance age. We really are, With because Disney, I mean, or in general, in general, really, because many more animation companies are doing so much better. I mean, DreamWorks, Blue Sky, um, sure. Leica. Guys, moment of recommendation, but please, please check out the stop motion films of Leica. They are excellent. Are they the people that did like Coraline and the Oh, yeah. Coraline and Caroline. I, oh, my okay. God. I, I, I'm i sorry to geek out. I just. That's okay. Well, it's all right. It's the place to be. But I do have something to say that just reminded me when you guys were talking about, like, the... Do you know how, um... It's sort of making me think of Nickelodeon, like, the 90s and 2000s area. Like, most people right. remember, like, a lot of the 90s shows, and then during this time period, like, Danny Phantom's kind of like, they remember it. Like, or at least there are a good majority of people that remember it. But oh, yeah, absolutely. One of those shows that is not widely remembered and it's a cult remember? show it's yeah cult it is i was gonna say it's, a, it's got it a cult a huge, following i would say like when you go on to deviant art and you look at all the fan art you could tell that show had a huge cult following mm -hmm. oh it's done and i love the... to say the least i'm i mean it it wasn't it wasn't like as popular as i would say I like it wasn't as marketed as like spongebob or something like that right where, like where, like, LP. Spongebob, like, I remember when I was growing up during the 2000s, Spongebob was pretty much everywhere, and that's where everywhere Spongebob was at his peak, and you saw him everywhere. Yes, and I'll be completely honest, guys, but I've hardly watched any Spongebob. Hardly any. And, um, at, in elementary school, everyone was talking about Spongebob. Oh, I, yeah. Oh, and I... And guys, I I never really got, jumped on the bandwagon of popular trends, so I hey, it's different strokes for different folks. Yeah. Not everybody's going to get into the same kind of stuff, and there's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to go in with the in crowd just because everybody else likes Absolutely something or just like yeah. something. Yeah. You know, just come up with Absolutely. your own assumptions. Yeah. Um, you're not a yeah, right. You're not right. Uh, you're not uh, wrong. Uh, it's just exactly and. This actually like um, can don't. connect um, into the episode we saw today, and and now yes. I can see my opinion. Um, all, and all different forms of technical media, basically. I can actually strongly identify with this episode because I wouldn't quite say what I'm like Danny trying to fit in with a crowd. Mm -hmm. I never. Yes, really... actually, you know what? I was yeah. just gonna say. 
Yeah. This episode's moral, I think, is really the whole tour of farce are, what does it really mean to be a true friend? Who are your true friends? Absolutely. And for me, I, I think friendship works like this. You got to be selective about your friends because you can't. I know this might sound a little unpopular, but you can't be friends with everyone. It's exactly. It, um, and and for me, if I was friends with some character, um, I would be friends with the real eccentric kind of characters. Like l- let's say I was sitting in a cafeteria with a group of characters. I would say the characters from Alice in Wonderland, particularly mm. the Bad Hatter. He would kind of be like one of my closest friends. The kind of he's somebody who you'd want to have a cup of tea with, basically. Exactly, and I could see us mocking all the bullies, almost <laughs> trolling, and getting and, and what I used to off. do when I was in high school. I would I would kind of be like that eccentric weirdo around the bullies. I would do the weird voices. I would act kind of crazy. Sorry about the barking in the background. That's. <laughs> That's Koopy. Aw, cute doggy. Yeah, I will bring him on the podcast for a future episode, and I think maybe Devin knows which one I'm talking about later on. Yes, <laughs> I know exactly which one you're thinking of. That's a little bit a while away. Yet. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, so there's... I was going to say, there is... Besides Technus and all the ghost elements, there's other, like, the high school subplot of Danny Fine. trying to be in the It crowd getting uh, invited to this party after Jazz is tutoring Dash. Like, Oh, Dash is trying to hit on Jazz. I, I love that. <laughs> that was oh a, my god. That's I... Danny's worst nightmare. This, oh that, my uh, god. In a, in a, a horrible alternate uh, uh, occurrence of events, Dash ends oh. up as Danny's brother-in-law. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Horrible. <laughs> that would be a nightmare. That would be for, a nightmare I, for I Danny. Um, um, if I was... Um, I'm gonna say nothing because that just makes me think of a future episode. I don't want to think about it. Right, I know what you're. I know what you're talking mm-hmm. about. Um, if I was to tutor Dash, what I would do, I would deliberately deceive him, deliberately give the wrong information. Well, he already is is a is a dummy. He's already not, ju- a... not just not just academically, but also socially too. I mean, he's a, he's a jerk. He's <laughs> he's not a very smart person, really. Exactly, and. Oh god. Imagine if Dash and Gaston were Oh my god. Well, you know, uh, speaking of Dash, it. I forgot to actually mention this when we did the first episode when we were comparing Dash to different characters. I just yeah. thought of something. Uh yeah. uh a cardboard cutout uh classic uh bully. This character. What are you looking at, butthead? <laughs> Say hello oh, to your mom for me. Fly. Oh my god, yes, yes, Ten. yes, Wade. I totally forgot. You could totally compare it between Biff and Dash. He has the same haircut as yes. Why don't you make like a tree? Yes. Get out. Get oh my out of god, here. That is He's Biff. From perfect. The, from, back, from the Back to the Future trilogy. Oh I never god. thought of that till now. Thank Especially wait, wait. 50s Biff. Oh my god. Oh god. Thank you. Um, there should be like. Um, a YouTube show or something, a web series called. The Secret League of Bullies. Mm-hmm. Where, where and you'd see of... all the different bullies to get. You have Dash, Biff, all, Gaston, all those guys would exactly. be at the table together. Exactly. And it would kind of be like a workout. It would be like the Hell's Angels of bullies. Right, basically. And well, and speaking of Biff Tan, and uh, uh, Dash basically has the same IQ, pretty much the same IQ as Biff. He's not very smart. Well, with, with bully characters. Um, a lot of them are. Guys, um. Just to go back to high school experience, I can, oh, I can God. strongly, strongly relate. Um, uh, Devin, where'd you go? We have some technical difficulties. Looks like she went to fly on her magic carpet. <laughs> uh, Arabian yes. Nights. That's a neat picture, by the way. I like the background. Yeah, she's having internet technical been... difficulties. It's yeah. te- Technus is taking over her computer. Te- Technus is fault. Technus is screwing up her podcast. I am here to ruin the podcast. <laughs> Tic tac toe all over the screen. 
Dang oh. It. Just like Mr. Lancer's back. Oh, God, no. <laughs> the razor. Oh, that was hilarious. Oh, God, that's horrible. His hair looks like a bear rug. Oh, his his back. Oh, his back was just... Ugh. Oh, hairy. It's like... My back's not even that it hairy like, yet. That, look, that didn't look like... That looked like fur. It, yeah, it's like he's growing like a fur coat or something. Oh, my God. It's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, like a beaver on his back. Oh, Mr. Lancer. <laughs> Um. And then the the blades of the electric shaver come out like like Wolverine or Freddy Krueger, basically. Yeah, I noticed that with the long gate. Yeah, the, like the claws. I was like, whoa, is that the influence of Wolverine or Freddy Krueger there? Yeah, and it just goes tic tac toe all over his back. Yeah, her computer is having issues. Um, so what should we do with the rest of the Stop, podcast? Just talk about the episode a little bit. Yep, we're just gonna keep going and hopefully she'll come back. That's fine. Right. Uh, so you okay. see this. Well, okay, the party at um, Dash's house. Yes. Uh... I should use the term party loosely because it's in very it's a party that's in, re in reality it's in very poor taste. Exactly, and oh, if I was at a party like that. It's a that... geek party. Oh man, if if I was at that kind of party, I would Now now if I was at a party like that, if there was a woman with like really odd bright colored dyed hair, maybe yeah. I'd go. Oh well, yeah. Well, it's I'd it's go. it's a humiliation kind of party basically. Yeah, they're and, just they're um, just doing it to make they're doing it to humiliate um, I wouldn't say necessarily Tucker, Sam, and Danny directly, no, but people like them, even though they're general. wearing their exact same clothes. And of course, Paulina is wearing Sam, uh, is dressed like Sam. <laughs> yes. Well, because the thing is that there was a, a garage sale that Danny sets up to get the money. Right. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. My computer just decided to be a big dick to me. <laughs> That's totally fine. We're just, I was just. I took over your computer. Technus is here. Technus decided to take over my goddamn computer. I think the Skype is now Technus. I swear to God. Yes, it there probably you go. is. It's a new nickname for Skype. Technus. Technus. But yeah, yes. so. Because Danny gets invited to Dash's party, and Dash is like, Hey, Fenton, you gotta wear this. Do you have clothes like this? Exactly, and. Just... And I think that clothing, it reminds me of ridiculous clothes from the 90s. Yes. Like, kind of like a, Vanilla Ice, MC Hammer. It's like boy band. It's like boy band it stuff. It always reminds me too of like a Chrome version of like, um, and this this was uh, this was this was a little bit later on. This was during I'd say maybe the, if anything, the mid to late two thousands where this started to spring the whole gangsta style. Oh yes. my god, Just the with, with the flat brims. And. Guys, here's what I realized about fashion trends. But a lot of them, a lot of the styles that follow one another have real no consistency. Mm, yeah, I think it's mainly based on pop culture when you think about it. Definitely. Absolutely. And, Mostly. And, and, and that's, that's my problem. And, 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 and that is my major problem with pop culture. It's all about conformity. It's all about the group. And what's well, what we were talking about earlier on? It's it's just like whatever's popular, you know. I I'm not gonna think for myself. I'm just gonna be a sheep. <laughs> Kool Aid. <laughs> oh. Yes, that does remind me of something though. What? Do, well, the one thing I like about this episode too is you learn about Sam's little secret. Oh, oh yes. yes, I was just going to this go into. This was actually one of my always one of my favorite parts. I love the old classic movie posters in her basement. Oh, Jaws, yeah. Star Wars, yes. Four New Hope. I noticed that now. So, yeah, so we do find so, out so that in there too, and of course you have the popcorn machine and the soda dispensers with many different colors. I mean, those those things are, those are those are like. Um, blood vessel killers there, those things. Yeah. Yeah, and the more I think about it, if a character like Sam was uh, real, I I would almost be instant friends with her. Same here. Best buds. Yeah, like, like, like yes. the kind of character I'd chill with. And 
I would I would chill with um, the social misfit characters, but I won't look down on them at all. And oh no, um, absolutely, they're cool. I don't and, I don't look down on it personally. I don't look yeah. down on anybody. Only thing I care about is if they're nice to me or that they're, and they're, that they're nice to everybody else. That's absolutely how you that. judge. And and you know I have in, in um. Um, you know that two of us have, um, well, three of us have Asperger's, um, mm -hmm. I've always adapted, I, um, it, it's always been very difficult to finding friends with niche interests. Right. Yeah, and that's I have true. Asperger's, like I said in the first episodes, I have Asperger's, yeah. too. Yeah, me too. It was yeah. easy for me, though, to make friends, though. Yeah, I mean, me too, it was, it was easy. Yeah, I just tap so, just uh, like that. So, you know, just out of curiosity, um, do you... Yeah. Do, do you and uh, Mike have, uh, I mean, have Asperger's, too? I hope this isn't too personal. Oh, no, it's, no, no, it's not. It's not um, personal. Hi, Ant. It took me, um, like, making friends to me was a huge development process. Um, I was, um, and so, it, um, in, for a while, instead of real friends, I created almost fictional friends in my mind. And also from a Maybe lot of in a way, though, too, that was good to a good thing, though, to help practice with different skills. Yeah. yeah. Instead of instead of like going out there and trying it on just somebody out there, practice at home beforehand. Sometimes That's, that helps. Absolutely, guys. Yeah. 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 And um. And um. In college, making friends is getting a lot better for me because okay. school I. I go to a school in North Carolina, mm -hmm. but I live in okay. Maryland. I'm oh. here in Norwood, so uh, Pencil, is that PA? Maryland's in, um, wow, I'm blanking well, right now. I'm like, it's one of the states. Oh, yeah. It's in, it's in yeah, well, of course it's in the, in the U.S. It's, it's on the Mason-Dixon line between yeah, like Pennsylvania, close. New York, Virginia. Oh, okay. In that area. And um, Pretty it's close. right near Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, you know, make a friendship, like like you said before, this episode is what all that's about. Who really are your true friends? Yep. And that's what all I'm these really... people are at, that are at this party, Dash, Paulina, all these people are... I would not be... Are... I honestly... All those I'm going to say it. Kids. Oh, um, because if I tried socializing with Dash or people. Paulina or Fred... Oh God, I would be so, or um, it would be just unbearably awkward for like, oh my God, why am I, you know, why am I doing this? Sam, um, I'm gonna check out Sam. I'm gonna check uh, out that cool doctor. If, uh, I don't know if you, uh, if you heard, or we were talking about uh, Pauline at the party earlier on when you were having technical difficulties, but yeah. you just I actually, mentioned. I, yeah. yeah, I did. I, I don't know if Devin was able to hear that though, but I said does it does it does it not surprise you that she's dressed like Sam? Well all the girls. Right. But of course she Sam. brings the most attention to it. And of course she yeah. tries to entice Danny with it too. And, and I you're thought it was funny. I, um it, no it is. Oh uh, on the topic of dressing like um Sam this is kind of like a paradox of nonconformity. Um, right. um, it's like dress up like somewhat. Dress up like the characters you, you know, like Yeah, uh, absolutely. See, see the I know reason I know what you're getting at. But yeah, I yeah. know what you mean. The but... reason, the reason why they did that in the first place is because Dash spent all his money on all the computer stuff that he bought from Danny's garage sale and he didn't have enough money to buy all the popular clothes. Right. So they... I was like, Hey, Finn, I forgot... Oh, you're not an itinerary, so I forgot to tell you that uh, we're losing... We're wearing loser clothes, man. Right. So he's, Danny's all there and all the popular, you know... Oh, I, I would really be interested to know what would have happened if both Sam and Tucker... Especially Sam um, ended up at that party. What oh, my God. oh my god. And then Paulina just came up to her and oh my god. Their uh, cat fight right uh, there. Um, uh, I would say something, but this is gonna be spoiler territory for another episode, so I'm not gonna bother. That's okay. Okay. That's right. Right. So guys, um any closing thoughts today? Um any animation goofs? Anything you noticed? Anything oh, I... one thing I noticed during the party. Yeah. 
you said about how all the all the girls were dressed like Sam Manson. Yeah. There's a muscle-bound guy there in the background that's dressed like her. If you take um, notice yes, of that. Yes, that's true. <laughs> you don't even know. I don't even know who he is or where he. He doesn't even look like he's in high school. He's just. He almost just looks like the Butch Hartman version of Arnold Schwarzenegger, and he's right there. Big that's chin, funny. big pecs. That's hilarious. Oh my god! <laughs> I wanted to be a part of the Nickelodeon. <laughs> you guys. Um, so, one You're thing You're all I... awesome. I... I get... <laughs> Guys, I love doing this podcast. It's... So do I. This is... I look forward to this. It, it's like... It's kind of like, um, a group of, um, kind of quirky friends right. sitting at a cafeteria table together. Right. Yes. Yeah, the more you I'm think like... about it, it, the kind of unstructured nature of it... And it's all something that we're interested in, and it's yeah. you know also yeah, for especially for for uh, Mike, Devin, and I. This is something that's very reminiscent to us. Yes, and you're so reminiscing to it. And, yes. and you're enjoying it as well, Zane, yeah. as as nice. a first, as and, just seeing it for the first time. And you know yes. what? I have an excellent idea. We can help make this online social chat about a mutual interest into a trend. Yeah. And podcasts are not really, they're tr- sort of popular, but they're not like. Well, um, let me go into a little more detail <laughs> what I mean. I mean, we can use this method as to help people with social awkwardness, Asperger's syndrome, as a great way to channel a social outlet. Exactly. Um, unite, unite, almost united around um, a mutual interest to make with a small group of people to you know. and you know, you know as a I mean? person with Asperger's syndrome myself there's a lot of stuff that I could describe and a lot of advice I could give right now that I don't really know if I want to give at this very moment because I don't have a whole mm. lot of time No. but on a, on a more uh, like a, a more like instant chat we could just discuss different things like stuff from, that's helped me throughout my life Right. So it could help my, pe- uh, you know, other people in the future as well. Yeah, and um, the way we should treat people is in the same laid back manner and not, not accusation. It's anybody. It doesn't matter who who you are. It's it's that whole yeah. do to, well, it kind of in a way it's kind of the the theme of this episode about who are your true friends and also do unto others. Yes. I mean, would Absolutely. you like if a bunch of people dressed up as you just to just to humiliate you like they like they did? No. And, um, I don't think I, I swear, would at all. I'd um, take offense to that. If I was in that episode in After Dash's party, I would become one of my alter egos. The right. mad, cackling Just villain, go ghost. Evil genius villain. And what I would right. do is I might plot on how to sabotage Dash's game the next time he has a big game. Right. Oh, I love to how... Him. I love to how... It, it, Dash's room just ends up at the very end getting trashed. Yep. Fenton! And Dash comes in. I'm, what did you do to my room, Fenton? <laughs> but what I well, you can see the, his veins and um, everything at that point. I do I do want to mention that you do find a little something discovering about uh, Dash when you look in the closet. Oh, all the, the stu- teddy all, bears. All the stuffed animals. <laughs> I love that. You could just use that for that blackmail now or revenge. Just... He just oh. One thing about Dash, maybe Dash deals with um, deeply repressed insecurities about himself. I was himself. just gonna say, and that's why the he's fact a that he maybe. owns teddy bears and to keep up with appearances, he represses his teddy bears and pretends to act manly, and he projects what he doesn't like about himself on the people he bullies. Hey, that could Most be. Likely. That could be. No, this would be fascinating. Maybe he, like maybe, a... um, I'm just guessing. I don't know how old that Dash was in the series. I'm guessing he was probably a little bit older than Sam, Danny, and Tucker. He's probably, maybe, like, um, maybe Paul I'm Paul just Luther. guessing. This is just, this is just, this is just an idea because of around, around the time that the, that the show came out. Maybe Dash was like born in, uh, like maybe somewhere in the late 80s, like 87, 88, or 89, if anything, and maybe. Maybe he was a huge Care Bear fan when he was real small. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. He still likes him, but he's too him. He's too him. He does. He he has his image to keep up. And you know what? 
Um, and another excellent example of that character, the, the bully repressing a lot of um, an unmasculine passion, Binky Barnes from Arthur. Yes. T terrific example. He's a big soft... Binky Barnes was always a very big softy. Yeah, and... Um, and and the thing is, in a lot of later uh, episodes of Arthur, when you talk about, when you're talking about Arthur, he's not particularly... I mean, he... he He's, he's not, not always a bully. He's he's a, he can be a very nice guy, Binky. In fact, Binky, this as weird as this sounds, Binky is a very well developed character. Yes, he is. Yeah, and Binky, well, Dash is the cardboard cutout. Right. Binky is well and rounded. He, and, his, and Dash's character, in a way, isn't re wasn't really a character that was made to be developed either. He's just there to be yeah. sort of he's a dumb the jerk. Just the jerk. Yeah. Right. Just right. the jerk. I, I, I do want to um, say something if... about Sam's character. Um, what I sure, wanted to say was, um, I love how Sam's character, you do find out that she's filthy, stinking rich. Yep. But right. I love Tucker's line. It's like, you have all this money. Why don't you become popular? It's like, simple. I don't want to be popular. She doesn't and, want to put on airs. She doesn't and, and want this, to put on appearances. And, and, and I love that. I, um, and if I was to talk to Sam, I would say, yeah. That's exactly like me. He's an because... awesome person. Oh, speaking of which, by the way, you get to meet Sam's grandmother for the first time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's a big role tonight. in a later episode, but that's another story. But yeah, yep, yeah. yeah, she comes in her little scooter and she... But that's another story. Yep, she bowls. Uh, I just... Oh, yeah, we're, we're going fish tonight or something like that, she says. <laughs> we're going to go party tonight or something yeah, like that. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Uh, can you let me ask you a question? Can you buy an airplane? Yes. Can you buy a fire engine? Yes. Can you buy a bowling alley? Uh, no. What are you talking about? You're filthy, stinking rich. Yeah, but we don't have enough money to get another one. One. <laughs> I just, I just thought that was awesome that Sam's like filthy, stinking rich, and I would love to have like a movie theater just like that, just in my yeah. basement, just sit down, watch and movies. That was just awesome. Don't buy a, just don't buy a remote for three dollars. Um, but I, um, I also have a um, mini movie theater in my house. Ooh, cool. I want, I actually want okay. one of those someday when I have my own place. Just a thought. I'm yep. thinking way too big here. Yeah, way too big in this place. Oh, no, nothing wrong with anymore. thinking big, man. I... Go, go big or go home. Absolutely. Go big or go I home, Mike. You can't get hey. a popcorn dispenser in your house or something. This we'll see. Wow. So we should actually talk about... Uh, just a little uh, come uh, a yeah. little preview of of uh, the, the next, next episode. episode. Mm -hmm. the next episode. Mike, you gotta take this Danny part. Fan. Stay yeah. tuned. For scenes from the next Danny Stay Phantom. <laughs> a very special episode. A, a very special episode. Let's see next episode, Mike. <laughs> What's it about? The next episode, according to my calculations, ah, splitting images. Yes. Which, uh, which uh, one is? I'm trying to think. Splitting images. Which one That's, is? Um, another villain's introduced. Um, it's about bullies, technically. I think I know which one you're talking about. Is um, hold on just a second here. I know which one it is. It's not. Okay, For me, I'll have to. Sydney Point Dexter is the character. Uh, yes! 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 I know mm -hmm. which one you're talking about yep. now. Okay, sometimes, meant... sometimes the titles sort of. I just had to uh, mention a character. In my mind, but you just to... described. Yes! I just have to just mm -hmm. tell you the character I... and then, you know. Edie, yes. Get out of my laboratory. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just uh, not to give too much away, but for the next episode. We're not. We just may not end up being in color. We may be. In, we may all be. Our screens may all be in black and white for the next episode. <laughs> oh, uh, it's in black and white. The next episode. Well, sort of. Sort of. You'll, see. You'll, you'll see. see. you'll understand. You'll see. see. It's a. It'll be interesting. Understand. It's an interesting episode. Very, Actually, it is an interesting one. You'll very interesting stylized. Just, just, just stylized. think. Right. Definitely. Oh, yes. And that'll be fun Point for me. Dexter. <laughs> Sydney Point Dexter. Until next... Stay tuned for that one, and until next time, we're going ghost. Going ghost. I'm gonna go ghost! Yay, go ghost. <laughs> and Technus, next time, do not screw up the podcast for us.
No more technical difficulties. But no more. Me. For me. Don't Come screw on. it up. We'll see you all next time. Affleck! Affleck Gilbert! Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs>